It's enough of people calling Stephen Curry a product of the Warriors system, because without him, the Dubs resemble a bottom-feeding team. The Dubs gave up 91 points in the first half to Brooklyn, Jordan Poole shot 4 for 17 from the field and was a game low, minus 31, Draymond was right behind him as a minus 27. Near the end of the Nets and Warriors game, a fan yelled at Kyrie, let's see what happens when Steph plays, to which Kyrie clapped back, it don't matter cause he gotta guard me, so it's even. Then KD said, congrats on that championship you won last year, I'm proud of you. Aside from just Steph and Wiggs being out, which is the main concern, entering a Christmas Day matchup with Memphis, after back-to-back 28-plus -back point losses to New York and Brooklyn, let's look at why the Golden State Warriors are currently embarrassing. Right before that, just 10.9% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. The Dubs are 1-6 in six in games without Stephen Curry this season, with the only win coming against my Toronto Raptors, with your boy DFlo in attendance, a game in which I witnessed Jordan Poole drop a career-high 43 points. To be fair, the Raps didn't have Ananobi, Trent Jr., or Achua, but it was still impressive how the Dubs pulled off a blowout win without their number one or their number two option. Conversely, in the games against Philadelphia and Brooklyn, the Dubs folded under the pressure of significantly better opponents than the banged up Raptors, specifically against KD and the Nets. There's going to be a lot of blame naturally placed on the typical championship core of Draymond, Clay, and Kavon, but in terms of plus minus, those three players are all at least a plus 69 when they're on the floor this year. Now, of course, Green, Thompson, and Looney get a ton of open space because of Steph's gravity drawing, which helps those plus-minus numbers, but everyone in the bench rotation, aside from Dante DiVincenzo, are getting outscored by at least 62 points when they're on the court. The little decisions you make as a franchise can come back to bite you. As for example, over the summer, throughout my Warrior videos covering their championship run, what Mac McClung could potentially add to the reigning champions became a trending topic on this channel. McClung isn't all hype either, as Mac earned that spot at Warriors training camp with his performance in the summer league. Over seven outings, McClung scratched and clawed his way onto the roster by posting 13 points, four dimes, and a steal per game on 49 plus percent shooting from the field and 46 plus percent shooting from distance. However, in the preseason, Steve Kerr only played him in one game for 12 minutes, then Bob Myers cut him. But before he was let go, over those 12 minutes, the high-energy McClung, who's currently pulling off 360 lay-ins in the G League like this, and whose vibrant presence and ball handling would have meshed perfectly with Jordan Poole, posted 9 points, 2 dimes, and 2 steals in that limited action. Man made the only triple he attempted. Why the Warriors cut him is beyond me. Max deserved a roster spot for a while now. Ty Jerome and Anthony Lamb Chops are both 39 plus percent three-point shooters, but I'd like to see more consistent energy on defense and in the locker room from those two. The scrappy defensive hustle that you need was something McClung could have provided. He could have taken a ton of pressure off the other Warrior creators. There's been some significantly non-productive Warrior supporting cast members, specifically James Wiseman and Jonathan Kaminga, who are second worst and worst respectively in Team Plus Minus, but in the midst of this incredibly rough season, one role player who hasn't disappointed is NBA champion Dante DiVincenzo. His percentages are nothing to write home about, but going back to our stat of the day in Plus Minus, and Dante's been the most valuable Warrior bench player in that department, I think the biggest weakness for the 22-23 dubs has been their, quite frankly, damn soft defensive effort. The refs have taken flack for the foul margin, but the officiating crew can only do so much when you're settling for jumpers and not playing with the aggressiveness offensively and overall force which it takes to win an NBA game. They've got to have some damn pride here, because as we saw in Kings County, beastly teams like the Kevin Durant-led Nets are coming for their heads every night. In terms of Kevin Durant, KD lost to the same Celtic squad that Steph took down in last year's playoffs, but Easy Money Sniper is now looking to reverse the narrative. Eight Brooklyn players scored in double figures against Golden State. The Nets scored 46 in the first quarter. As I mentioned, 91 in the opening 24 minutes. They also led 95-52 at one point in the third frame. For the defending champs to get embarrassed this badly, even without their two top options, says a lot about the Warriors' depth as a team. Thankfully, the trade deadline's right around the corner, and there's many moves that Bob Myers can make to get this resembling a championship 
system again. That said, as they open an eight-game homestand, there's no timetable for the return of either Stephen Curry or Andrew Wiggins. With 49 of 82 left, the Warriors own the 12th toughest schedule remaining, and the proof is in the pudding when it comes to the depth of this roster, losing Gary Payton, Otto Porter, and Nemanja Bialica, and replacing them with guys that can't statistically, vocally, or overall energy-wise match that production has proved to be detrimental. Golden State ranks at an abysmal 24th best in team defensive efficiency, a category they ranked number one in during their championship season last year. That 21-22 campaign also saw them rank number four in least points allowed in the painted area, whereas this year, they're number 15 in that department. They were number three in rebounding last season, but ranked 23rd best on the glass this year. That same drop-off from 21-22 accounts for Golden State's opponent's points per game, opponent field goal percentage, and opponent three-point percentage. Dubs Nation just has to hang in there and know there's a lot of season left, plus getting Stefan Wiggs back could solve a lot. That said, if you were the Warriors GM, which move would you make? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top five commenters by March 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Two shout outs from my last two uploads go to firstly Ozzy Baller, who says the Cavs will definitely be a title contender this year because of their depth and variety throughout the team. Cleveland has become the beneficiary of the Donovan Mitchell trade. Donovan has fit in perfectly and was exactly what Cleveland needed last season. We could expect the Cavs to have a deep playoff run but Milwaukee may beat them in a seven game series because of their experience alone. With that said, the Cavs with their young core and the rise of Donovan will win the championship in the very near future. And secondly, to Kent Saludo, who says, Raptors need to stay healthy because their key players missed a lot of games and it's difficult to build a smooth flowing chemistry if your team isn't playing enough games. I really think this Raptors team is underrated. This team has the talent and personnel to be contenders. OG might be my favorite Raptors player right now because I really like his defense and hustle on the court. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.